It's the children, naturally enough, who are at the heart of UNICEF's work alongside the government in Lao PDR. Children like these in Udumsai, attending one of more than a thousand primary schools that benefit from a UNICEF-supported strategy to raise teaching and learning standards. These schools of quality are based on a simple idea, that children need an education that is relevant and stimulating and delivered in a safe and protective school environment. Ensuring students participate and support each other is a key part of the classroom experience. But there are other features too. UNICEF helped the Ministries of Health and Education develop special teaching materials contained in a distinctive blue box to teach children the importance of health and personal hygiene. All schools of quality must have their own supply of clean water, even if it has to be carried from a nearby borehole. And there are separate toilets for boys and girls. Installing this basic infrastructure is central to a water and sanitation program which targets some of the poorest communities in the country. Delivering health services to remote areas remains a key priority. This often requires the intervention of outreach workers who explain the benefits of immunization, breastfeeding and good nutrition and deliver a package of services including vitamin A and micronutrient supplements. Meanwhile, an overhaul of the national cold chain is helping ensure vaccines remain in good condition all the way to the point of the syringe. The broader aim is to strengthen the country's routine immunization system, making successes like the 2007 measles campaign more easily replicated. Persuading communities to accept modern health practices is crucial which is why UNICEF and its partners invest such effort in changing people's behavior, here using village chiefs to promote health messages on avian flu. Another initiative has seen the use of more unconventional methods, like these village bulletin boards, to encourage parents to vaccinate their children. And there have been UNICEF's efforts working alongside government and communities to deter children from risking injury or worse by touching leftover remnants of the country's wartime past. Partnerships are critical to UNICEF's work here. The opening of a joint office with the World Food Programme in northern Laos was just one example. And collaboration was evident as well in the response to the Mekong floods in 2008, when UNICEF and other UN agencies joined hands with the government to bring assistance to hundreds of affected communities. Sometimes advocacy for children takes place at the highest level of government. Discussions like these during the visit of UNICEF's executive board help put children high on the national policy agenda. The risks that face young people feature increasingly on that agenda. A partnership with Buddhist monks helps raise awareness on HIV AIDS. Different responses are being developed to counter the threat of child traffickers and to support other children at risk. All together we have the uh, to do some things, uh, we have to bring the Dhamma, we have to uh, bring the activities to make the students to reduce stigma and discrimination. This Vientiane restaurant, run by former street children, is one example of how the country program helps young people find their way in a society undergoing many social and economic changes. <laughs> A similar theme is being introduced to the Youth Radio Initiative with Lao National Radio. Now expanded to 10 provinces, the programs are shifting their focus to helping young people develop health awareness and life skills. Halfway through UNICEF's five-year country program, the collaboration with the government and other partners has produced important gains in advancing the rights of Lao children. At the same time, it's clear that substantial challenges remain, challenges which the current midterm review will help identify while also prescribing ways they can be addressed in the years ahead.